Good morning. It is my distinct pleasure to welcome you to UCI and the 2020 Healthcare Forecast. I arrived on campus one year ago last Saturday, and every day that I've been here, I've been thrilled by the innovation and commitment to transforming healthcare and well being here in Orange County. At UCI, we push forward cutting edge treatments, but we're in the process of pioneering a new educational and care model. Obviously, we're very excited about it. There are opportunities here that I'll take two minutes to describe, but the passion to train the diverse healthcare workforce of the future and novel strategies for improving well-being are resting here and growing out through Orange County in very exciting ways. So just this week, you might have seen uh, in the Orange County Register and the Orange County Business Journal and even in the LA Times, the description of our new building constructions for the College of Health Sciences, the Susan and Henry Samueli College of Health Sciences, and the Sue and Bill Gross School of Nursing, which is gonna be built uh, not so far from here. And what makes the college so exciting is that we are standing up four schools at once in an integrative fashion. So we have a strong school of medicine, a new school of nursing, two emerging schools, pharmacy and pharmaceutical sciences, and public and population health. And we are working together to create the integrated educational milieu for team-based care that we know to be the future. The thing that makes this rather unique is that at other institutions, certainly all the ones I've ever been at, these are siloed entities that have grown up as opposed to working together. And so trying to bridge them is very difficult when you have those pre-existing silos. Those four schools combined with the Samueli Institute for Integrative Health are creating the central focus of the new um, entity of the College of Health Sciences. Um, so what does this mean for the future of healthcare? Well, what it means is we have students who are being um, asked to think with open minds about what healthcare should look like. We're saying we are very proud of what we can do currently in the United States, but we need to recognize that as one of the 20 richest nations in the world, somehow we spend twice as much as the next in line, but we don't have the longevity, we don't have the maternal health, we don't have the child health of any of those top 20. That means we need to think about what comes next and how we get there together. And then of course, given the, being that we're ensconced in the university, we are able to work with the most advanced aspects of what is revolutionizing healthcare, big data, um, artificial intelligence, uh, and so forth. So let me give you one example. I promise this isn't a paid announcement, but I'm excited about the types of things that are happening here in health. This is work that Bill Carnes um, is doing. He's a UCI gastroenterologist, and he introduced a game-changing way of detecting and treating colon cancer, the second leading cause of cancer deaths in the United States. First, he amassed the biggest data set of benign, precancerous, and confirmed malignant polyps. And then he worked with Andrew Nin, an expert in information technology at UCI's Beale Applied Innovation, on a deep learning algorithm. During colonoscopy, the software they developed gives physicians real-time analyses to increase their ability to find and remove polyps from the standard detection rate of 50% to over 96%. That's a wow. And of course, the structure that we're building improves clinical care in other ways. We, in the near term, are expanding ease and access for our patients in Orange County by expanding ambulatory sites in Newport Heights, Yorba Linda, Fashion Island, Costa Mesa, to name the ones I'm allowed to say. 
Next month, the UCI Board of Regents is expected to approve our plan for a child health care center and a medical office building just around the corner up on Jamboree. And at that same meeting, we are expecting approval for the design phase of a new hospital on Jamboree, which will include an emergency room, 200,000 square feet of ambulatory center for uh, outpatient surgery and oncology, and a 350,000 square feet inpatient hospital uh, specializing in oncology, neuroscience, orthopedics, and cardiology. So this is what I picture will happen not too far down the road. In one building, there will be well child care, but also care for the complex child. So instead of that family having to go to four different specialists at four different locations through a week, they will go to one place. In the emergency room, a scary event. A friend with slurred speech arrives by ambulance. An MRI confirms that there's a stroke. And the treatment begins within five minutes because we are using artificial intelligence now to read those scans. And minutes count in a stroke. The average to treatment elsewhere is 68 minutes. And here that patient gets it within five. Next door, we have a patient preparing for knee replacement surgery and mindfulness therapy we are now studying and is showing that we can decrease opioid <coughs> use in patients through that technique. And upstairs, a patient is receiving chemotherapy and at the same time looking out over the grassland arboretum that's behind this facility that's being up on Jamboree. And then they'll just take what we hope will be a quiet drive between Irvine and Newport Beach when they're going home. So, that's my picture for what our future in this area looks like. And I'm going to leave you with just a vision of what I see about UCI one year in and its relationship to Orange County. UCI is one of the AAU schools. That's one of the 63 most um, um, uh, elite research uh, enterprises in the United States. But it's only 55 years old. It's the youngest school in the AAU. And as a result, it still has that hunger, that, that passion, that audacity of youth. So as the only um, uh, AMC, um, uh, a, uh, university-based system in Orange County, we are not only pushing the boundaries of discovery and education, but we're connected to the entire UC system. And so when you combine the five cancer centers of the UC system into one whole, we are bigger than any other enterprise in the United States. That's 1,000 clinical trials, 8 million lives under care. If you need care, then we can come in. And if we don't have it right here, we have a second opinion. And then you can still stay at home and get the best care. So I don't think any of this happens without the transformation that is required through business and understanding finances, because that enables us to move the fields forward. And therefore, I could not be more excited about the conference that we're gonna to have today and what we're gonna learn over the next two days. This conference began 29 years ago when the candidates for president, you know, some of you look old enough to remember Clinton and Bush, we're discussing healthcare platforms as well. Perhaps we will leave this meeting with some new insights for the paths we might follow to improve access, decrease cost, and eliminate health inequities. So I'm now going to introduce you to Eric Spangelberg, the Dean of the Paul Mirage School of Business and Professor of Marketing and Psychology. Eric came to us in 2014 from Washington State, where he was the uh, dean of their business school. He's facilitated key initiatives here um, for digitally driven world um, of marketing as part of a campaign. And he's renowned for his research 
on olfactory and musical cues in retail environments and the effects of self-prediction on people's behavior. And that work has, has appeared in The Economist, Fast Company, The New York Times, The Wall Street Journal, to name just a few. So it is my pleasure to invite Eric to the stage. All right, thank you, Dr. Goldstein. And I, uh, I know I speak for all my colleagues in the Paul Mirage School of Business to say we're excited to see where your leadership takes us to address many of the challenges you put forth and the opportunities that we see. It's, uh, and, and we're excited to partner with you and your leadership teams. Good morning, everybody. It's uh, my pleasure to welcome all of you <clears throat> to, and those of you in the overflow room. I know we have an overflow room and we've, I've seen people f continue to filter in here to the 29th Annual Healthcare Forecast Conference. It's 29 years, as uh, Dr. Goldstein had mentioned, and this conference is a remarkable legacy left to us by, uh, by uh, Paul Feldstein. Dr. Feldstein was, uh, was a, a longtime professor. He's now Professor Emeritus, and he uh, retired actually just before I arrived. He's unable to be with us today, but he, I know many of you know him appreciate him and he communicates his his uh his uh hello and and uh he wishes he could be here but uh we do owe him a debt of gratitude and so i know those of you that are in communication with him can say hi and thanks and at the end of the day you can drop him a note and say how much you enjoyed today because i'm sure you're going to enjoy the day our conference organizers inform me that every year around 90 percent of registrants are returning attendees and several of you have attended since the very beginning or almost the very beginning. So I hope you enjoy today as much as you enjoyed 29 years ago. And I, I, as Steve said, maybe you can remember that. I don't know. But uh, I, I don't. I, I started doing the math and I thought it got confusing to me. I can't remember 29 years ago. But, uh, but I'm going to work on it this afternoon. We are excited to continue delivering a program that's responding to the needs of the uh, healthcare community and to have you return year after year to hear the updates on the most critical issues that are facing healthcare. And, and uh, it really is nice for me to be able to say hi to many of you again, too, throughout the day. And I saw a few of you this morning already. And then uh, I'll, as I slip in and out today, I'll, I'll, I'll look forward to saying hi. As dean, I have the pleasure of thanking our sponsors. We would not be able to put this conference on, deliver this great program over the years without their continued support, for which we are extremely grateful. Can I ask everyone from one of our sponsoring organizations that are shown here on the screen to stand, please? That's a, I think that's a number of you. Thank you all very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. I also want to take the opportunity to mention just a few updates with regard to the Paul Mirage School of Business. And so I'm only going to take a couple of minutes, but this is one of my opportunities to just let you know some of the things that are going on. Our exceptional faculty continue to add to the Mirage School's prestige and a spot on the front page of all the major rankings. Our faculty have framed the Mirage School uh, programs around overarching objective of training leaders for a digitally driven world. And consistent with this theme, you'll no doubt hear about some of the ways big data and technology are driving change in the healthcare industry today. Our specialty master's programs in business analytics, finance, professional accounting, uh, they continue to draw thousands of applicants annually. And we are graduating our first class of Masters of Innovation and Entrepreneurship students this year, the first and only program of its kind in the UC system. We're very proud of that. Our hybrid and face-to-face -face, uh, MBA and our executive MBA programs continue to provide opportunity for exceptional students to juggle work, family, and professional obligations while they prefer, while they pursue their uh, professional educational goals. And we've re-envisioned and we're continuing to re-envision our healthcare track within our executive MBA. And, and we're excited about the developments there. And last but not least, our undergraduate program is the first of its kind in the UC system to test an online delivery system. We have a completely online undergraduate minor and our degree, full degree program for transfer students will be rolling out this fall. And so stay tuned for that. 
please feel free to reach out to the school if any of what I just mentioned piques your interest or might be of interest to people that you interact with. I think there's some, a little something for everybody in what we're doing in the Mirage School. So that uh, concludes my sort of uh, commercial for the Mirage School. Um, and, but uh, now it's my pleasure to introduce to you Larry Wellickson, who will moderate our first session today. Dr. Wellickson has been on the Center for Healthcare Management and Policy Advisory Board for almost 20 years. He's the Chief Executive Officer at Society of Hospital Medicine. Prior to that, Larry was founder and senior manager at IPA Medical Group and MedQuest Partners. He serves as a trustee on the board of the American Society of Internal Medicine. He's a volunteer faculty member at UCI's Medical School in the Paul Mirage School of Business and at the Wharton School of Business. I, I, I think rather than go any further about Larry, I'll encourage you to read his bio in the, uh, in the program because uh, there are a lot of other accolades that I don't have time to list. But I should finally mention Dr. Wellickson was named one of the 50 most influential physician executives by Modern Healthcare Magazine. And so with that, I would just like to have you join me in welcoming Dr. Wellickson. Enjoy your day. Thank you. Thank you, Eric, and it's, it's a pleasure to be here, and I want to welcome everybody. I'm, I'm a, very honored. The seat that I'm occupying, for those of you who've been around like I have for more than 20 years, used to be where Paul Feldstein sat. He was the moderator of this session for many, many years, and uh, I won't fill his shoes, but uh, I'll do the best I can. Let me tell you a little bit how, how this first session is going to work. Uh, that, that uh, each of the panelists are, are gonna talk for about 20 to 25 minutes. One of my jobs is to play the Academy Music theme when they get a little bit too far into their speech. Uh, and I want everybody, one of the things that I've loved about coming here for more than 20 years is the interactivity. This is a, this is a very dynamic audience. You're not a picture that we look at. You're actually very important participants in this conference, and so, uh, if, if you're not gonna stand up and ask questions, then it's gonna be a very insular discussion between the four of us up here. So be thinking as you're listening to, uh, to, to these presentations of the things you wanna know in this uh, dynamic healthcare environment. There will be people in the aisles with, with microphones will ask you to uh, state your name clearly, will ask you to identify what organization you're with. We record this and then uh, disseminate this proceedings out to you and other people. So please help us uh, as, we, as we get into that. Uh, I just wanted to just take a couple minutes. Uh, what, what this, what this session does is sort of a very large 30,000 uh, foot view of not just the healthcare financing, but of sort of the world that's <coughs> out there outside of healthcare uh, and how that might, might influence us. And so I think it's worthwhile thinking about the fact that uh, not many of us would have thought that three years into the Trump presidency that Obamacare would still be existing. Uh, that, you know, I think we need to recognize that in a turbulent time that, that health care is on every voter's top three list. And so this is, is a really important time. And yet the very health care world we're living in is, I, is being influenced by what we would normally have considered outsiders. So Amazon, CVS, Walmart, JP Morgan, everybody looks at the $3.2 trillion that throws through, flows through healthcare and says, you know, I want a piece of that. Uh, and, and even within healthcare, we're sort of reshaping the partners. So CVS and Aetna get together, or Humana and Kindred, or Walmart and Humana. Uh, and, and within healthcare, we're having consolidations between hospital systems, between physician groups in the pharmaceutical industry and in the insurance industry. Uh, and, and we're sort of redefining what healthcare is. And you'll hear about some of these things going on and, 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 and UCI is, is at the forefront of this, but artificial intelligence and what that might mean if you're a dermatologist or a radiologist or, or a pathologist. Uh, we're, we're talking about hospitals at home and, and most hospitals in this country generate more than 50% of their revenue from people that are not lying down recumbent in their, in their inpatient facilities. Uh, and so there's a lot of changes going on. You know, and all this is on a backdrop of low unemployment, low inflation, 
a rising stock market, and an ever-increasing deficit. So there are lots and lots of turbulence and factors and opinions out there. And, and these three people are going to straighten this all out for you over the next <laughs> hour and a half. And then we can just all go home. So uh, I think you're in. Uh, you know, we, we've got an interesting panel. We've got uh, Jim, who, who has been here since I think Nixon was president. And, uh, and Bill's been with us the last couple of years. And Liz is the new kid on, on the panel. So you got a little bit of something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. And with that, let's, you've heard enough from me, so let's, let's get on. Uh, so it's my pleasure to, to introduce uh, Jim Glassman, who's our, our first speaker. Uh, he's a managing director at, at J.P. Morgan Chase and a lead economist for Chase Commercial Banking. Uh, he's, you know, he's one of these people that uh, frequently is giving us insights into the markets, and understanding the changing economy and the impact on not just healthcare business, but on a variety of businesses. Uh, he's frequently a commentator uh, uh, in, in both print and, and, and other media. Uh, before coming to, to JP Morgan Chase in 1979 and 1988, he was a senior economist and a research and statistics and monetary affairs department at the Federal Reserve Board. Uh, I've heard Jim speak many times at this conference and always learn a lot of stuff and always get a little frightened, but uh, you'll get to hear what he's got to say for 2020. Welcome to the stage. Jim. <laughs>